What is going on college basketball fans? Welcome back to another video. Today we have our complete breakdown of the Final Four along with my predictions for the two Final Four games this weekend and I'm excited because these Final Four games are going to be super super fun. Before we get into the breakdown I just want to say subscribe. If you guys are new we do a ton of college basketball content here on the channel. We're going to do college football content as well this year. Um, a ton of transfer portal stuff. Transfer portal stuff coming out every single day new star players entering the portal we're gonna have all the updates here on the channel you're not gonna want to miss it and yeah guys let's get into it so our final four is set and i think i saw earlier today only like 286 brackets somewhere around there had the exact final four correct so that just goes to show you how hard it is to pick like a perfect bracket only less than 300 people mind you there were millions and millions of people hundreds of millions of people that made brackets this year less than 300 got the final four correct and that's supposed to be like the easy part is like trying to get the final four at least getting like a couple final four teams correct but yeah it's just insane that just goes to show how hard it actually is but here we have it alabama in the final four i mean i i can't believe that alabama actually made the final four they are a very very offensive team but I think I kind of overlooked them at the start because Alabama, yes, they are a very offensive team. They don't play much defense. But I think I was saying the same thing about teams like Kentucky, right? But Kentucky, I said, yeah, they have potential to make the Final Four. Alabama, I wasn't really thinking as much. But here they are with the chance to knock off UConn. If they knock off UConn, I mean, the way that they've been playing, they can beat anybody. The way they played against North Carolina, I mean... They can beat anyone, and as much as I'm saying, yeah, Alabama, uh, super offensive team, super, super good offensively, no defense. Their defense has been closing out games, North Carolina and Clemson. It was their defense in the final possessions of those games that got them to the Final Four. Nate Oates makes his first Final Four as the head coach, super good head coach, and Alabama makes their first ever Final Four as a program in college basketball so how about the tide UConn UConn has just been completely dominant I mean I think we all thought that they might have been here regarding like a huge upset but like it's the way that they have been dominating like they just won the national championship last year they lost three starters and Andre Jackson Jr. Adama Sanogo and Jordan Hawkins come back and are even better like i was saying this a lot um before march madness even back in since like january or somewhere around there it feels like uconn is going to be the first back-to-back -back champions since florida in 06 and 07 and florida returned a lot more players than uconn and that's what a lot of you guys were telling me but and I agreed with you guys. I think I was like, yeah, but this team, like the, the, I feel like this Dan Hurley just has the perfect offense where he can just plug and play people where he wants them. And he has a lot of talent once again this year. And just the offensive scheme that UConn runs is so amazing, which is why I think it's going to be a hard matchup for Alabama, who is not that great of a defensive team. Are they going to be able to keep up with a team like UConn? Um, it's definitely going to be an interesting game. UConn, I mean, I just had to talk about this real quick. In that Illinois game, that 30 to nothing run, it was a tie game, and they went on a scoring 30 to nothing scoring run where Illinois didn't score a single point. I mean, you cannot get much more dominant in the game of basketball than that at this level a team like illinois there was an offensive juggernaut heading into this game to do that man it's going to be hard to knock off uconn i'm going to get into my predictions real quick i kind of want to talk about each one of these teams let's talk about nc state nc state yet another 11 seed cinderella run I had them in my Elite Eight. I was feeling good about NC State going pretty far. I felt like if they got a matchup with Marquette, they were going to be able to knock them off. They had beat Duke before, so if they did have to beat Duke or meet Duke, I actually had them losing to Houston in my Elite Eight, but I had them going on a run. I, I saw the potential there for this NC State team, and they've been playing amazing. DJ Burns is the most 
fun player to watch in college basketball today. And everybody's realizing that. I was saying that back in my predictions. When I had NC State in my Elite Eight, in my predictions video, I was saying, this man, DJ Burns, is majestic in the post. All you people who just wait till March Madness to watch college basketball are in for a treat because he is so fun to watch, man. And I'm so happy he's in the Final Four. And not only is he in the Final Four, but he's going to have to go up against the behemoth, the giant, Zach Eady, who has also been dominant. And the thing about DJ Burns is he's not the best, honestly, defensively, which is why I think he's going to have a hard time with Edie. But, and Edie's just got so much height on him. I think, you know, DJ Burns is definitely going to have a good game. Um, but I don't think Purdue is going to have to double team him the way that Duke was, the way that Marquette was, where in, where DJ Burns was facilitating out of the post, kicking out to three, I feel like Zach Eady is going to be able to handle him one-on-one -on -one defensively. Like, don't get me wrong. DJ Burns is definitely going to have his moments. He's going to score. But I think, like, Matt Painter is going to trust him enough there in that one-on-one -on -one matchup to where he's not going to send a double. He's just going to allow him to get beat every once in a while. And Zach Eady is going to get his, stop his stops as well. But what a run it is for NC State. I mean, the 11 seeds have been magical, man. 11 seeds have made more Final Fours than 6 seeds, which is kind of crazy because 11 seeds play 6 seeds in the first round, so they kind of have that same path to the Final Four, and that just kind of shows you the magic of March Madness, the magic of the 11 seed, and yeah, the 11 seed is still the highest seed to ever make the Final Four, and I believe it's happened 6 times, and yeah, I think the last time it happened was Loyola Chicago, so Super fun stuff. I love the Cincy State team, man. I'm super glad that they knocked off Duke. I did not want to see Duke in the Final Four. Call me a hater, but I mean, if you're not a Duke fan, you don't want to see Duke in the Final Four. It's boring. NC State in the Final Four is a lot more exciting. DJ Burns versus Zach Eady is a lot more exciting. You have to admit it. And real quick, before we get into my predictions for these two games, let's talk about this Purdue team because Purdue went on this run they finally made their first final four since 1980 wow i mean other than uconn who won the championship last year alabama won their first or made their first ever final four nc state in here since their last national championship which they won in i believe the late 70s or 80s i believe it was the 80s um and purdue making their first final four since 1980 so and i personally believe this this is Purdue's best chance to win a national championship. I mean, when is Purdue going to have a guy like Zach Eady again? When are they going to have a team like this again and not choke, right? The past three years, they lost to North Texas, 14 over a three seed. They lost to St. Peter's, which was a 15 seed. Yeah, they did lose to them in, what was it, the Sweet 16? But that's still a 15 seed. And then last year they lost to Fairleigh Dickinson. FDU. 16 over 1. Only second time that ever happened in March Madness history. And for them to not only go through this path of pretty tough teams. But to be pretty dominant as it, at it as well. Is very impressive. And they're finally in the Final Four. And they have an opportunity to... As good as NC State is, I personally feel like Purdue matches up really well against them. Like I said, I just feel like they're not going to have to double DJ Burns because they have a giant down low who can defend him and put a ton of size on him. And I just feel like they match up really well. I feel like they're going to have an opportunity to play for a championship probably against UConn, but we're going to get into my predictions in a second. But I don't know when Purdue is going to have another opportunity at a championship like they do right now. This is going to have to be their year. I feel like this is going to be, have to be their year. Um, but let's get into these predictions. I mean, what a run for all these teams. A really fun Final Four. Alabama versus UConn. It's going to be high scoring. It's going to be fun. But that's what we thought about UConn versus Illinois. And UConn went on a 30 to nothing run and just shut them down defensively now i think it's going to be a little bit harder for alabama i mean mark sears 
is a super, super good player. I mean, it would not surprise me if they throw a couple of different guys at him guarding them. Um, but Tristan Newen, very good defensively, uh, a veteran player. That, that's going to be key there in that matchup. Um, I think UConn, just offensively, they're too tough. Who's going to guard Klingon down low? They're going to have to attack Klingon. They cannot be scared of Klingon whatsoever. Whatsoever, They're going to have to maybe even try to get him into foul trouble. It's, it's definitely going to be interesting. I just feel like it's going to be so hard for Alabama and this defense. Yes, I mentioned their defense got them here, but that was just in the late possessions of the game. All game against Clemson, they weren't necessarily great defensively, but the final possessions they were. I just don't know if they're going to be able to do that against UConn, which I believe is the best set offense in college basketball with Alex Caravan able to shoot lights out. It's just hard, man. Then you got guys like Stefan Castle. It is just tough. Cam Spencer is going to take that. He just took that Jordan Hawkins role and ran with it, man. They have so much, like, they don't get tired. UConn does not get tired, and they have depth if they do. But Dan Hurley makes sure that if, if one thing he makes sure, he makes sure you know the offense and he makes sure you are conditioned because you cannot run the UConn offense if you are not conditioned because you're going to run around screens a ton, man. And Cam Spencer is going to run a lot around screens. Who is going to be a guy on Alabama who's going to chase him around? If I were to guess, it would probably be Aaron Estrada. Not a horrible choice. I think that he could, you know, hold his own in that matchup, which is why I think it's going to be closer than Illinois versus UConn. But I still, at this point, I feel like it's impossible to not pick against, to, uh, to, to not pick UConn in this moment. The way that they are playing, the dominance that they are showing, I mean, I'm wearing the shirt, but I'm not a UConn fan. It's just inevitable. I mean, they, I feel like they are going to be playing for the national championship on Monday. Next up, let's get into our matchup, NC State versus Purdue. I kind of talked about a little bit with the matchup down low. Um, how these guards match up, I feel like, you know, Purdue's just going to have to stick with that inside out game. They're going to have to have guys like Lance Jones hit some big shots. They're going to have to have Fletcher Lawyer hit a big shot. I think NC State, yes, they are 11 seed, but who they beat to get here, man? They beat a two seed. They beat a four seed. They can be anyone at this point, and I truly, truly believe that. And yes, it is usually the higher seed in the final four that usually gets it done and makes it onto the championship game, but not always. Definitely not always. I mean, just last year, FAU was the nine seed. They were going to play for a national championship if it wasn't for a buzzer beater. If that buzzer beater misses, FAU is playing for a national championship last year as a nine seed. So I truly believe whenever you get to a point, it does not matter what seed you are. If you make it to the Elite Eight, if you make it to the Final Four, you can be anybody in the country. And I think that that holds true here. I think, you know, DJ Horn, he had a, a, a tougher game against Marquette. But against Duke, he was playing phenomenal. It's the DJ boys, man. DJ Horn, DJ Burns. They're going to have to really play so hard. And I just don't think it's enough. I think this Purdue team's too talented. They finally made it to the Final Four. After a lot of disappointments, I feel like they're going to make it to a championship. And I know it's boring to have both these one seeds win. But watching these two teams play... Just looking at the matchups, I feel like it is impossible to pick against these two teams right now. I feel like UConn versus Purdue would be a fantastic championship game. Um, a matchup that, you know, these two teams actually have not played this year yet. Donovan Klingon versus Zach Eady, two of the biggest guys in the sport. I mean, it's just going to be a treat to watch. Um, I cannot wait for these final four games. And if it is UConn versus Purdue, I'm excited. If it's NC State in the championship game, I'm excited. If it's Alabama in the championship game, I'm excited because if that happens, I would be a little bit surprised. 
but it is March, so you wouldn't be too surprised. Either way, I feel like we are in store for some fantastic games this weekend. Let me know who you guys have winning these games down below in the comment section. And real quick, before we get out to out of here, if you guys did stay to the end, I am going to take a look at my bracket, see how it's going, and take a look at the top bracket on my YouTube group. I think we had like, how many people do we have in there? 300 to 500 people, something like that. Um, whoever wins the Bracket League is going to get a $50, 50 gift card to the place of their choice. Um, just a reminder there. So we're going to look at my bracket, look at who has the best bracket in my group. So I did have UConn as my only correct Final Four pick. My Final Four was UConn, Dayton, Houston, and... Who did I have? Tennessee. So not great. I mean, Tennessee made the Elite Eight. So there's something. I got that run right. I got that Elite Eight run right. I did have Clemson in my Sweet 16, but I had them losing to Dayton. And mind you, Arizona had their letdown game one game after I thought they did. If Arizona had their letdown game against Dayton... I feel like the path was there for Dayton to possibly make the Final Four, at least the Elite Eight. So I feel like the path was there for Dayton. They definitely had the opportunity to. Arizona just had their letdown game one game too late than I predicted. Um, Clemson, I got them to the Sweet 16, so I kind of had a little run for them correct. I had Creighton, Tennessee correct there with Tennessee winning. Um, I did have I did have Charleston upsetting Alabama. That was a super bad misread there. I had Utah State upsetting Purdue. Super bad misread there. Um, I did have NC State, like I said, in my Elite Eight. I had that correct, but I had Houston beating them in the Elite Eight. So that was one run that I did have correct. And yeah, I had UConn over Iowa State. Not too bad there. UConn over Illinois, so yeah, my bracket, not great, but my champion is still alive for what it's worth. Let's go ahead and look, take a look at um, our group, though. Let's take a look at our group. I'm in 44th place with this bracket in the group. First place is Big Danny C's. No way his name's Danny, right? Is his name Danny, too? But he's 9,000th in the world. 99.9%. .9 Sheesh. Champion UConn still in. He had Alabama Final Four correct. And he had Purdue Final Four correct. And he had NC State in his Elite Eight with Houston over them. So, wow. Yeah, this guy had three Final Four picks correct in his fourth one. He had in the Elite Eight. So this guy was definitely like that. He predicted the Oakland upset. Oh, wait, no, he did not, actually. My bad. Um, But, wow, yeah, this guy's bracket is insane. Wow, this guy, yeah. This guy, bare minimum, deserves the $50 gift card if he winds up bringing it home. I mean, to predict Alabama correct in the Final Four, that is, yeah. This guy's bracket, he's him. He's him. I don't know what to say. Big Danny C, you're in the lead right now. <laughs> what a job you did predicting. Let's see if anybody's tied with him. Is anybody tied with him for first? No, it's a clear one. He is heavily in the lead. But JM Tippy 25 could pass him if Purdue does win the national championship. So I just want to give you guys a little update on what's going on with the bracket group and uh, what's going on with my bracket. My bracket, you know, not doing too hot. My champion's still alive. We'll see if they can do it. Um, but yeah, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Let me know what you guys think um, is going to happen in the final four. We got a ton of transfer portal stuff going to come out very, very soon. A ton of big names just entered the portal today. Should have that video out tomorrow. And yeah, Ton of more content coming on the channel. So make sure you guys subscribe if you guys are new. And I'm out.